first of all, a very warm welcome to you all. Just a very brief organizational remark. The format of this seminar is a bit different from previous seminars. Um, we have formed three groups. Um, you find your group allocation in the folder, and the three groups will stay together basically during the seminar. So this time the speakers will visit the groups and not the people will visit the speakers. There is one exception, that is what we called the Budapest Bologna Cafe, um, but you will get a little more information on that at, uh, at a later point in the program. Um, and in order not to lose time, I would like now to give the floor to the Vice Rector for Science, Research and Innovation of the Edwish Lorand University, Professor Erne Kese, to give a welcome on behalf of the University. Ladies and gentlemen, dear guests, dear colleagues, I can tell you easily colleagues, being a member of the Bologna Experts Group and being involved in the Bologna follow-up group as well. Uh, as you might have seen, my name didn't appear in the program. I replaced Professor Barna Mezei, who is the rector of our university, but who has unfortunately other duties for the time being. Anyway, as this seminar is about research-based learning and research-based teaching, it's probably a right person, someone who has to do something with research at this university. Uh, I will show you briefly a few data about our university, not, not so much numbers, but concentrating a little bit on research. Let's begin with some numbers. The university called Utvashlora now is the oldest surviving university in Hungary. Hungary had a, a complicated history and during history some formerly founded universities just disappeared. This is the, the one, the oldest, which survived. It has been founded by Cardinal Pazmány Péter whose name you will find in the program as well as the room just below us has its, his name. Uh, he founded the university by that time as a Jesuit university and uh, I will speak later of the further history of the university. This is not only the oldest but the largest university in Hungary having roughly 30,000 students and the according number of staff and faculty. Uh, this is not only the oldest and largest university, but we can tell that it's the best university. Some Hungarian national rankings just came out this week and they suggest the same thing. In most of the subjects our university offers for students, it is first ranked in Hungary. The history begins with the deed of foundation by Cardinal Peter Pazmány, who founded outside nowadays Hungary, and by that time outside the, the territory of Hungary occupied by the Ottoman Empire. It is Trnava nowadays in Slovakia. And uh, the university was the the only one by that time and for a long time afterwards to teach Hungarians, not in Hungarian but in Latin as it was usual by that time. As the Jesuit order has been disappeared from uh, the globe as, as the Pope uh, didn't allow them to work further, sometimes in 17 160 or so, the university became a state university and the Emperor of Austria and the King of Hungary gave a status and later on the university moved to Buda Castle. It is not this castle we are in, 
Uh, in parentheses, I have heard that the Store Castle name is interesting but not understood by most of you. Stork is the name in Hungary of the newcomer student at the university. And as newcomers are most in number, it's a great mass, the newcomers, and they share sometimes common lectures. This has been the greatest lecture room for a long time, accommodating some, one, some eight, nine hundred students. So this is the store castle. It has been renovated since. Now we have two uh, rooms. One of the rooms is called Pazmain Peter, as I told you, and the other room is called Viarin. Maria Theresia, who was the Empress of Austria and the Queen of Hungary. And she renewed the status of the university in 1780, and by that time the classical faculties were present at our university. Uh, as I told you at the beginning, the name has been changed several times. In uh, 1950, communists didn't like the name of the cardinal being a, a religious person, so they wanted the university to give another name. Finally, they should give up searching for another name than a name of a baron, as Laurent Dutrush was a baron, an aristocrat, whom the communists didn't like either, but he was a great physicist, well known by the time, and even nowadays. Uh, the system of faculties, is, we have now eight faculties you see on the screen, has been established 2003. Uh, there was an integration in Hungary of universities, and as a result, we have enlarged the activity of the university. What is missing from the faculties is medical faculty and the faculty of engineering and the faculty of economy. The faculty of engineering we didn't need because it was detached from, engineering studies were detached from the university at the beginning of the 20th century, forming the Budapest Technical University. In 1950, the medical university has been formed from our medical faculty and the theological facu uh, college has been formed from our theological faculty. The number of students still reflect the old times. Most of the students uh, learnt, uh, are taught at, at the faculty of humanities, science and law, the classical faculties. The buildings we have also reflect d different uh, eras of the university. Oldest is the faculty of law building. We will have our dinner tonight. Uh, the second oldest is this campus, we are now. And uh, you see bottom left uh, a communist era building, which is the faculty for special education and the newest building you will see tomorrow from the ship where we will have our dinner this is the new science building which hosts equally the uh, faculty of informatics and the faculty of social sciences coming back to uh, baron and physicist and professor Laurent Dutwish who has been serving two or three times for a year as a rector of our university as well. He was a physicist. The law of surface tangent bears his name, and he was associated to studies of gravitation. Uh, he developed the most sensible gravitational instrument which has been whose pre precision has been surpassed uh, from the 1910s when he developed only after the 1980s. And it has been used to, to detect oil fields for a long time. There are other famous alumni of the Utrecht University and 
here I come to the subject of research as all those alumni I will show has been or are great researchers. There is an interesting page of the registry of the PhD examinations. There are two guys on the same page whom you probably know. One of them is John von Neumann in Hungarian called Neumann Janos, the inventor of the computer. And uh, he, did, he did many other things, especially in quantum mechanics. There might be some persons here who understand quantum mechanics should know the name of John von Neumann as well. And the other guy on the same page is Boy Zoltan, who invented the light-emitting diode, which we use, which is probably in my uh, screen on the laptop as well. And he was the one who first measured the distance precisely between moon and earth using a radar. He also suggested a definition for replacing the old definition of the meter, which is in Sèvres, close to Paris, by a certain number of uh, length of the wavelength of uh, a light uh, source. There are a few alumni of Alta University who has been received Nobel Prizes the first of them was Philip Lenart, who has been studying the cathode rays and uh, took part in the, uh, in the elaboration of what led to the electron finally, theor theories and experiments which led to the electron. Sandur Diabert, who has got his uh, Nobel Prize, not at our university, but in Seged, but then became professor of our university. Then uh, the very first professor in physical chemistry at our university in 1919, George Heveshi, who invented the radioactive tracer method, which is widely used even nowadays in medicine. Uh, George Bekeshi was an interesting person. He was professor of, of uh, experimental physics and worked in acoustics, but he discovered how the human ear works and he received a Nobel Prize in medicine for his works, dis discovering the mechanism of human ear. Our most recent alum alumnus who has got a Nobel Prize is John Harshani, who is a, also an interesting person. He could be a, a very good example of the Bologna process of, or the result of the Bologna process as he studied maths and physics and he graduated from uh, sociology in Budapest and then he got his Nobel Prize for game theory, which is more mathematics than sociology. Uh, Hungary, Budapest, and Ötvös Lorand University is famous for mathematicians as well. There is no Nobel Prize, as you might know, in mathematics, but a recent uh, installment is Abel Prize, which is Abel was a mathematician and it is named after him and it is given by the Norwegian Academy of Sciences. In this year, it was Andre Semeredi, our graduate, who received the Abel Prize. He had a very interesting uh, mentor named Erdős Pál in Hungarian, or Paul Erdős in an in, in international uh, I would say, as he was also an interesting person. He had no uh, residency. He traveled all the time. He, he stayed in hotels and guest rooms of universities and has given problems to many mathematicians. He, he is the guy whom we could take an example now when we discuss teaching by uh, research. He has given problems 
research problems, real research problems to very young science, uh, well, students, even secondary school students who solved them and then became great mathematicians after. One of them is Laszlo Lovas, who is still a, a professor at my university. And uh, he, he didn't receive the Abel Prize, but he was involved in the committee of the Abel Prize. And he received two other important prizes in mathematics. So I guess you are on the right place to discuss uh, teaching by research or doing research during the studies. Uh, Budapest is also the right place for both the Bologna process and research-based uh, teaching and science as the very first issue of nature in this century. Uh, it was the January 4 issue of 2001 had an essay whose title was the 20th century was made in Budapest. And in this essay, there are many scientists I mentioned and many others I didn't mention, but who were alumni or professors of this university who made the 20th century according to the editorial board of nature. For those of you who are not familiar with this uh, magazine, Nature, I can tell that nature is roughly speaking, the lead, leading science magazine of the world. So I wish this seminar that it, has, it should have some results leading to making the 21st centuries, leading to teaching students who will make the 21st centuries. Welcome again on behalf of Otoshluran University. Have nice sessions have nice discussions and enjoy uh, gastronomy, life and culture in Budapest. Thank you very much for your attention.